By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we've got some sweet old school magic for you because I am playing against Yoop Vak. And he's playing with a mono black zombie deck with, of course, Islands of Vakwak in his main 60s. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I really like his take on zombies. And that means that it's not me playing a zombie deck for a change, it is my opponent. And I'm playing against him with my fish liver assassin, my fish liver poison deck, which is a mono blue merfolk deck built around fish liver oil and merfolk assassin. Ooh, all the craziness in today's episode. Now, um, before I start with the deck text, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also skip this section of the video, how it's really simple. Check the description below, there you will find several timestamps. If you click on the link MTG Games, the timestamp I should say, that takes you straight to the games. For here, we are going to continue with the deck decks and I'm actually going to start with the deck of my opponent, Yupvak Mono Black Zombies. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Mono Black Zombies. And let's just kind of start with the obvious here in this deck. So let's start with Zombie Master. I guess most zombie decks kind of start with the Zombie Master. Two black and one to cast for a 2-3 creature that gives all other zombies one black to regenerate and Swamp Walk. Now the trick here is get two Zombie Masters in play and they give each other regeneration and Swamp Walk. So that's actually pretty cool. And when you're looking at the zombies that my opponent is playing, what I'm noticing is that there are a lot of zombies that used that didn't used to be the zombie creature type and that's i guess an important point here to make is check the current oracle text and check the current creature type when you're building these type of decks as you can see cabal ghoul is now a zombie uh, scavenger ghoul is now a zombie cyclopean mummy is now a zombie headless horseman is now a zombie walking dead is you guessed it it's now a zombie so when you're making these decks, it's always good to, you know, go to Gather, go to Scryfall and kind of check out, okay, what old school cards are now in today's era in 2021 considered zombies? And I'm actually happy with all those changes because it means that your zombie deck gets more depth. You can start playing more interesting creatures. You can do more. So I'm actually happy. For example, The Fallen, a card from the dark, is also a zombie, just to name one. Um, so just a little tip when you're building a zombie deck yourself. Now, obviously, an important card in this deck is Nevenor's Disc, right? It's kind of a no-brainer here. Nevenor's Disc, 40 cast, comes into play tapped. It untaps, you pay one, you blow up the board, right? Destroys all creatures, enchantments, artifacts, everything except for the lands. Now, the cool thing about this card, right, the synergy with Zombie Master is that all your zombies have regeneration if there's a Zombie Master in play. So you can regenerate your creatures and you kill the creatures of your opponent. Now, it's not as simple as this because, yes, you can regenerate all your creatures, which is great, but, you, but as you can see, my opponent is also playing with four Batmoon, three Evil Presence, a Pestilence, uh, two Knowledge Vaults, a Cyclopean Tomb. So when you're playing with Nevenerals Disc, you really have to be good at knowing when to cast it, when to keep it in hand, when to use it, when to maybe keep other cards in hand, you know, for example, maybe keep a, a bat moon in hand, wait until you draw into, uh, or you're able to cast your Nevenerals disc, blow up the board, regenerate your creatures, and then the next turn drop that bat moon for like an extra dramatic effect, right? So it's not as simple in this deck like, oh, I'm just gonna pop the disc because I can regenerate my creatures anyway. No, you really have to take a moment and, and, and think and, and play with this deck a few times to kind of know, okay, what's the best moment, the, uh, the best strategy to kind of use this disc. Talking about strategies and using the disc, there's a really interesting rule um, uh, interesting synergy, I, sh I should say, between Cabo Ghoul and Nevenerals Disc. So let's kind of zoom into Cabo Ghoul. So Cabo Ghoul is a card from the Arabian Nights, one black and two to cast, so three mana for a 1-1, one, one, and it is now a summon zombie, a creature zombie, and it reads, at the beginning of each end step, put a plus one plus one counter on Cabo Ghoul for each creature that died this turn. Now the interesting thing is, Cabo Ghoul doesn't have to be on the battlefield when these creatures are dying. So what you can do is you can kind of, uh, you know, pop your disc, blow everything up, and after that play your Gobble Ghoul, and your Ghoul will get a plus one plus one counter for actually all the creatures that died in that disc activation, even though the Ghoul itself wasn't on the battlefield while it happened. So in my opinion, this makes the Ghoul 
much more interesting to play. Unfortunately, it's very pricey now for some reason. So if you still have it in your dusty binder, you know, dust it off, take it out, because this card deserves, uh, you know, to be on the stage. It deserves a moment in the spotlight. And I guess that's what we're going to do today in today's game. Hopefully, we're going to see that Gobble Ghoul track trick uh, in action. Another card that I would like to discuss is the Cyclopean Tomb. And the Cyclopean Tomb is just so interesting, right? You've got Evil Presence, of course. One black to cast enchant land turns a, a land into a swamp. That's clear, right? But Cyclopean Tomb does the same, but it's old school. So it's it's always complex. Four to cast, stunning art by Ansemetics. It's a mono artifact, meaning you have to tap it. So two and tap, put a mirror counter on target non-swamp land. That land is a swamp for as long as it has a counter on it. Activate only during your upkeep. So in your upkeep, you can use this artifact to create a swamp on the side of the opponent. Turn a land into a swamp. Now, this is when it gets interesting. When Cyclopean Tomb is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, at the beginning of each of your upkeeps for the rest of the game, remove all mirror counters from a land that a mirror counter was put onto with Cyclopean Tomb but that a mirror counter has not been removed from with the Cyclopean Tube. So it's just, oh man, just reading is like a tongue twister. But um, basically what it says is when the Cyclopean Tube gets destroyed, the mirror counters that you've placed on the lands, they actually stay on the lands. And every upkeep, so your upkeep in your turn, you get to choose which mirror counter goes off what land. So the Cyclopean Tube can still impact the game long after it has left the game. And that means that it actually works really, really well with an Evan Earl's disc, right? Because can you imagine you've got five like lands of your opponent turned into swamps with your Cyclopean Tomb. So they've got one of those mirror counters on it. And then you pop your disc, your Cyclopean Tomb gets destroyed. But it will take five whole upkeeps before all those counters are gone. And your opponent only needs to have one swamp and your creatures are unblockable if you, of course, have a Zombie Master because they give Swamp Walk to your creatures. So I just think that's that's really cool. And, you know, I guess, I guess now I've discussed, for me, the highlights of this Zombie deck. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this brew. And maybe before we look at my deck, my Mono Blue deck, um, let's just take a moment to uh, look at Island of, of Vak Vak. So Island of Vak Vak. It's pretty cool, you know, you can tap it and uh, it can turn uh, the power of target flying creature to zero. So you basically get no damage from the creature. You're probably thinking, is it Maze of If better? Probably it's better. In some in some scenarios, it's not better, you know, um, but I guess in this deck it would be better. But, of course, when you call yourself Yoop Vak, you want to play with Island of Vak Vak. And uh, Yoop, man, I appreciate that. Really cool to see two of these cards. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't really play with flyers, I believe. So I'm not sure if they're going to be uh, useful against me, but we'll just have to see. So this is the deck of Yoop. Now let's take a look at my deck. And here we see my deck, Fish Liver Poison. So um, the first thing um, that I want to discuss are those three proxies you see there at the bottom of the deck photo. So this deck was made according to the Northern Paladin rules. And I played in a duel and actually, you know, I took it with me and also played it against Yoop for this match. Now, um, if you want to know more about the rule set or Northern Paladins or the actual game that I played with this deck for the first time, there's an info card popping up right now and that will take you to that match. So if you want to see that match, you can check that out or maybe look at this video and then go back to that match. It's, you know, it's up to you. Do what you want. Um, but as you can see, there are the three uh, power cards in this deck. They're proxied. So Time Walk. Ancestral Memory, which is actually Ancestral Recall, and then the Mox Sapphire. Now, as you can see, the rest of the deck is not proxied, and there's another um, thing in the deck that I'd like to point out, because, uh, as you probably saw on the cover photo of this video, you saw an Island Fish Jesconicus, and maybe you're wondering, where is the Island Fish? Well, actually, for this game, I took out my Papa Modi, my Mahamoti Jin, and I decided to put in an Island Fish Jesconicus, and the reason is it just kind of fits this deck better, right? It's called Fish Liver Poison. You know, it's got fish in it. It's got merfolk in it. I kind of feel that Island Fish Jeskonicus feels more at home in this deck than Mahamoti Jin, even though Mahamoti Jin, of course, is a better option. Um, why is Mahamoti Jin a better option? Well, let's kind of take a moment to look at the Island Fish Jeskonicus, right? So it's a beautiful, beautiful card. Absolute beautiful art by Jesper Mirforce. 
it's three blue and four to cast, so seven mana to cast. So that's a lot, right? That's more than a Mount Moti Jin. What do you get in return for that seven mana? You get a six, eight. So I guess it's got better, it's got more power than Mount Moti. It's got more toughness than Mount Moti, but it doesn't fly. And also, um, yeah, there's also a drawback. Let's, let's take a look at the drawback. So you must pay three blue during your untap phase to untap Island Fish. Island Fish cannot attack unless opponent has islands in play. Island Fish is destroyed immediately if at any time you have no islands in play. So that means if my opponent, for example, plays a Tsunami, which is not going to happen in this matchup, but still, you know, if my opponent plays a Tsunami, then, um, you know, all my islands are gone and my Island Fish dies. So it's really, I love Island Fish. I love the art of Island Fish. I'm playing on an Island Fish playmat for this matchup. So I'm a big fan of, of the card. I think it's really old school, but it's just, you know, it's so hard to play with it. Anyway... I've put it in the deck, I'm going to play with it, and of course it's my dream to clone it or maybe play a Vesuvian Double Ganger and get two Island Fishes in the game and have a Phantasmal Terrain on one of the Swamps of the Zombie deck, turn it into an Island and, you know, try to attack and kill my opponent with Island Fish, right? That is the absolute dream. But it's actually not necessarily what this deck wants to do. So let's take a look at what this deck actually wants to do. So this deck is built around two cards. This is kind of how it started. Merfolk Assassin, which is a Merfolk, Merfolk a 1-2 Merfolk for two blue. You can tap it and then destroy target creature with Island Walk. And Fish Liver Oil is a card from the Arabian Nights, one blue and one to cast, an enchant creature that gives target creature Island Walk. Now you don't have to be a professor to kind of see the synergy between these two cards. So I can play my uh, fish liver oil on, for example, the zombie master of my opponent. And if I then have a Merfolk Assassin, I can tap my Merfolk Assassin and I can kill um, the uh, the zombie master of my opponent, right? So it's a way to kind of kill his creatures. Then my fish liver oil goes back to my graveyard and I've got a skull of Orm to get it back from the graveyard. So I think that's pretty cool. Maybe you're wondering, okay, if skull of Orm plays such a big part in this deck, then why is he only playing with one? Well, while I was playtesting, I just discovered that Skull of Orm is just so incredibly slow. So I just figured if I just have one and I draw into it, it's great. If I don't draw into it, then I still have my Merfolk Assassin and my Fish Liver Oil to kind of kill some of his creatures, which is great value. If I cannot use my Merfolk Assassin to kill anything, then I still have my Lord of Atlantis, because Lord of Atlantis will give my Merfolk Assassin, because it's a Merfolk, plus one, plus one, and Island Walk, so it still kind of works. So I figured out instead of like full on going on this Skull of Orm um, fish liver oil trick, I wanted to just have the fish liver oil and Skull of and Merfolk Assassin in there, but only one Skull of Orm. So um, yeah, if you kind of know what I mean, if you can follow me, I kind of want to bet on multiple horses with this deck. And then there's another card that's kind of interesting with Merfolk Assassin, and um, it's a very classical uh, combination. I think it was made since the moment the dark came out, and that's War Barge. So War Barge is an artifact, and you can actually use it to give creatures Island Walk. So it's really cool. So I can pay two, I believe, give target creature Island Walk, and then I can use my Merfolk Assassin to kill that creature. So I've just got a recurring killing machine. So I think that's really, really cool. Another nice thing to know about War Barge is that um, when War Barge leaves the game, the creatures that have Island Walk thanks to the War Barge, actually get buried, they get destroyed. So another trick that I could do with this deck is I can give creatures Island Walk with War Barge, then I can play a Boomerang on my own War Barge and kill the creatures of my opponent. Or I can use my Time Elemental on my War Barge, that would be even cooler, and uh, you know that way kill creatures, uh, uh, creatures of my opponent. So there, there are a lot of tricks in this deck. Um, and also I'm playing with, uh, talking about tricks, I'm playing uh, with Dance of Many. So Dance of Many is an enchantment from the dark, two blue to cast. And when it comes into play, you get a token, and a token is a clone of target creature on the battlefield. So for example, I can clone my Lord of Atlantis. Now the thing is, with Dance of Many, I have to pay two blue during my upkeep or Dance of Many is destroyed. As soon as Dance of Many is destroyed, the token is destroyed as well. As soon as the token is destroyed, the enchantment is destroyed as well. So that's kind of a connection. So I have to pay two blue during the upkeep. But there is a trick where I can make sure that the token and the enchantment are not linked together. And the way that works is I can cast my Dance of Many, choose my target, and while the Dance of Many token is still on the stack, 
I can play my boomerang on the Dance of Many enchantment. So um, that way, the Dance of Many goes back to my hand and then the token comes into play. And because the Dance of Many is then not on the battlefield, there is no connection between the two and I can play my Dance of Many again, make another token, or I can just keep it into my hand and I know that I don't have to pay the two blue during the upkeep because the Dance of Many is no longer on the battlefield. So that's kind of a little trick to use Dance of Many without the downside of having to pay the extra upkeep cost. Now, obviously, Dance of Many and also the clones and the Vesuvan, they're going to focus on copying the Lord of Atlantis, right? It's kind of like a copy machine. The more lords I have, the better my Merfolk Assassin gets as well. So that's kind of a trick. And then the four Phantasmal Terrains, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? I want to create islands on the side of my opponent. My creatures will have Island Walk, hopefully because of Lord of Atlantis, and I can just kind of swing in because they're unblockable. So in that, in that regard, which is kind of funny for this matchup, I want to do the same as my opponent. We both want to use Island Walk. Well, I want to use Island Walk and my opponent wants to use Swamp Walk. I guess we both want to use Land Walk abilities to kind of kill our opponent, right? So it's going to be really, really interesting to, to kind of see who is going to win uh, uh, this matchup. So this is my deck. We've already looked at the deck of my opponent, Jupe. And that means it's time to go to the games. Game number one, and here we go, Island. So I'm on the play, playing with the Island Fish Winter Edition playmat. And there is a quick evil presence by my opponent and a Cyclopean Mummy. And let's see what I can do here. Tapping two blue for a Merfolk Assassin. So the one, two creature from the dark, a Merfolk, I can tap it to destroy target creature with Island Walk. And there we see a Cabo Ghoul by Yoop. So he's got a pretty good start here. I'm on 18. Let's see what I can do. Tapping four, playing Control Magic, stealing the Cabo Ghoul, attacking him for one. He's going to drop to 19. Let's see what he can do. And there is another Cabo Ghoul. So he's playing his second one, taking the damage from the Cyclopean Mummy. I don't want to make the trade. And, ooh, there is a Fish Liver Oil. This is what my deck wants to do, killing the Cabo Ghoul. That means I'll get a plus one, plus one counter on my Cabo Ghoul. First time attacking him, remember the counter doesn't come until the end step. So I should get a counter now, put it on the Ghoul. It's now a 2-2 creature. And here we see a Neverneural's Disc. That is interesting. So I'm going to drop to 14. More damage done by the Cyclopean Mummy. And that's really, really doing a lot of work so far. Six total damage by one Cyclopean Mummy. That's kind of a lot. Let's see what I'm going to do. I can attack, of course, with the 2-2. Two -two. Or just attack with both. Just deal three damage. That would mean my opponent's going to drop here to 15. Instead, I'm only attacking with the Assassin. It kind of means I want to trade here. I want to block the... Cabo Ghoul on the Cyclopean Mummy. I think that's not really a good decision here. The better decision would have been to perhaps, you know, keep the Merfolk Assassin untapped. I think this is kind of a mistake from my part here. There are two more Cyclopean Mummies. Wow. Two, two, one Mummies. The pressure is real here playing. Oh, that's probably why I didn't want to kind of block with my Merfolk Assassin. Playing a Fish Liver Oil and destroying that Cyclopean mummy, but taking damage from the other one. Just a lot of mummies are just coming at me this whole game. I'm already on 12. He's thinking about popping the disc, deciding not to, casting a Knowledge Vault instead, a card from Legends, and he can pay two, and then he takes the top card from his library, put it under the Knowledge Vault, and when he sacrifices Knowledge Vault, he gets to get the cards under there, but he has to discard his hand. But in return, he gets the card under the Knowledge Vault. So if you time it right with the Vault, it can be a very powerful card. There we see another attack by the Cyclopean Mummy. Look at my life total. I'm on 10. And I've just played a Skull of Arm. So Skull of Arm, 3 to cast from the Dark. 5 and tap to use to get a target enchantment from the Graveyard back to my hand. So let's see if I can do that. Now I have enough mana. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Going to tap the Skull of Arm. Going to get an enchantment back. Choosing to get the Control Magic back to my hand so I can play it again another turn. Not sure why I'm doing this main, by the way. I can just do it in uh, in the turn of my opponent. But I've already made the decision. And as you can see, uh, Yoop is putting a card under his Knowledge Vault. And now he's attacking with Hatless Horseman and Cyclopean Mummy. Tapping, uh, blocking with my Merfolk Assassin here. Taking two damage from the Hatless Horseman. Going to drop to eight. Is he going to play a Zombie Master? No, he's going to play another Cabo Ghoul. And that Ghoul is going to get two counters because two creatures died. Oh, man. And this is bad news for me. There's a 3-3. But I still have 
that control magic, of course, in hand. So I can cast control magic on the cover ghoul, get that cover ghoul on my side of the board. So I've got a 3 3 creature now. That's actually kind of sweet. And I wonder what's going to happen. And there you see a Knowledge Vault activation in my end step. So two cards under the Knowledge Vault, no cards in hand. So he could decide to sacrifice the Knowledge Vault. He's going to use it again. The nice thing about Knowledge Vault is you can sack it when it is tapped. It doesn't have to tap to sack it. So you can just sack it anytime. You can use it, then he can sack it. So he's got no cards in hand. If he sacks the Knowledge Vault, all of a sudden he's got three cards in hand. And I don't really have anything to do against artifacts in my main 60. Deciding not to attack here because I'm so low on life. And look at that, drawing another card with the Knowledge Vault and then sacking the Vault, having four cards in hand, drawing for turn. All of a sudden, he went from zero cards in hand to five cards in hand. This Knowledge Vault is huge and maybe it's actually going to give him the win here. Let's see what he's going to do. I'm kind of expecting him to use his Neveneral's Disc now. Yeah, he's popping the Disc. He's going to destroy everything on the board. In response, going to cast Boomerang. Looks like I'm going to cast it on my Control Magic, getting it back to hand. That will also allow me to steal a creature from his side of the board. Instead, ooh, interesting, using my Skull of Orm, getting back a Fish Liver Oil, and then getting back my Skull instead. So I'm letting the Control Magic go to the graveyard, probably thinking I can recast Skull of Orm next time, activate it, and get the Control Magic back, although it's going to cost a lot of mana. There's a Cyclopean Mummy and a Walking Dead, so a 2 2 and, or sorry, a 2 1 and a 1 1 on the board of my opponent. Tapping 7. Oh, Island Fish! Just gonna cost! Yeah, man! Ah, oh, love, love it, love it, love it. So it's a 6 8, and we both have our Island Fish just going because his playmats out for this matchup. I'm feeling good about this. Even if I lose, I still got to cast this gorgeous creature, so I'm happy about that. There are two zombie masters hitting the board. That means the zombies both have regeneration. Blocking the zombie with the most power, taking one damage from the walking dead, dropping to seven. It's not looking good for me here, and I still don't have that control magic. I wish I would have just, you know, boomeranged to control magic. That way I would have been able to now play it out. And I'm making a mistake here, by the way. I'm paying five mana for the Skull of Orm. It's actually three mana and five to use it. I'm also playing a Dance of Many. Copying my Island Fish just going because so at least I've got two Island Fish, which is pretty cool. So I've got two six eight creatures. My problem is that my opponent's creatures have regeneration, so he can simply attack and regenerate them. Okay, let's see. So he's gonna swing Alpha Strike. Makes sense because he can just regenerate it anyway, and he's still on a pretty high life total. I believe he's on sixteen still. It's kind of hard to see with his dice. They're um, blocking two Zombie Masters. Of course, he's going to regenerate them. Remember, they give each other regen regeneration. There we see a Scavenging Ghoul, basically a 2-2 creature with a lot of text on it, but it's also a zombie, so it also has Swamp Walk and regeneration. I have to pay two for my Dance of Many, playing Island number seven, no, number eight, actually not 10 islands, but two of them are tapped. So I've got eight untapped islands and playing a phantasmal terrain okay i wanted to say i come one island short to kind of use a control magic so this is quite funny attacking with both of the island fish and dealing six damage with uh with my original island fish i'm asking him, can you please just block the copy so i can have the original one the og deal the damage and look at his life totally dropping to 10 but it's not going to save me here he's probably just going to attack with everything and, uh, and that means it's completely, completely over. And that's exactly what he does. Swinging with his entire zombie army and zombie nation is winning this game, number one. But I'm actually happy because I got to play, clone, and attack with Island Fish Jaskonicus. So for me, this was a good game. Now we're going to dive into our sideboards, I guess. And then we're going to go to game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I guess I'm on to play. Yeah, because I lost that one. So starting with an island pass turn, Swamp by Yoop. Tapping two here for a Lord of Atlantis. So it looks like a good start for me here. A bit of a slower start. Oh, I want to say slower start for my opponent, but it's not actually. He's got that Cyclopean mummy again, and we saw quite a lot of those mummies. Look at that, a second Lord. That means they give each other plus one, plus one. Attacking here with a three, three. Kind of a dream start for me so far. There is a Walking Dead, and uh, the Walking Dead has regeneration for one black, so that means it can stop my lords. And playing a Merfolk Assassin, that Merfolk Assassin actually gets plus two, plus two because of the two lords. So it is now a three, four, 
deciding not to attack because I'm kind of afraid of a double block. He could double block with the Mummy and the Walking Dead. And, ooh, this is a good card, Pestilence. He can destroy my entire army. There is an Ancestral Recall, so there's that uh, proxy card drawing to three. And that's uh, hopefully going to help me to, uh, to try to find an answer for that Pestilence. Maybe a well-timed Boomerang can kind of help me here. Drawing a lot of cards. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Playing another island and uh, showing him the proxy and telling him a little bit about the story. There's quite a nice story attached to the proxy set. And uh, But let's focus on the game here. Playing a fish liver oil, destroying his walking dead. He cannot regenerate it because he doesn't have a black open. Blocking here with the cyclopean mummy, chumping, taking some damage. And I'm also playing... A skull of arm here so he's on 14 he can now use his pestilence he can pay three with the pestilence to basically destroy wipe the entire board and that's exactly what he does so we all take three damage and my lord's die and because my lord's die my merfolk assassin dies as well luckily for me is unable to play another creature so at least the um the pestilence goes away and there is a proxy of the mox sapphire and a jam day tone but look at that that never neural's disc is going to be really nasty for me it's going to make me lose two of my top artifacts and uh, i got i've got a fish liver in my graveyard so i guess i could use it instead i'm deciding to draw another card kind of makes sense as well i just don't have enough mana to do both look at that playing a time walk so i'm finding all my power here in this second game we didn't see any power in uh, in game number one and drawing just another card with the jam day tome so at least i've uh, been able to use it twice before the disc popped so the disc destroys everything on the board and there is a headless horseman 2-2 creature and it is a zombie of course and they're a double merfolk assassin and i'm also playing a phantasmal terrain giving my opponent a nice island so if i get that island fish i can actually attack with it and there is a bad moon that means that headless horseman becomes a 3-3 hitting me for three i'm dropping to 14 and he is out of cards but he does have that knowledge vault and there we go we see a war barge and i can give island walk to the headless horseman kill the headless horseman and attack with one and we're kind of discussing it and it's actually three to activate not two like i said in the deck tech and he's using his knowledge vault putting a card under the vault and we saw in game one how strong that knowledge vault can be attacking him again he's now on eight using the knowledge vault again casting another knowledge vault counting my mana can i cast an island fish another one island fish just going to oh this is so sweet island fish just going to and remember i played that phantasmal terrain so my opponent has an island and he's pretty low on life. Look at his life total. I believe he's on six, if I'm not mistaken. And he's discarding his hand, sacking his knowledge vault, drawing a lot of cards, trying to find an answer to the island fish Jasconicus. Only having swamp in hand. That's it. I, I, I think I'm going to win this one. Not there yet, though. He's going to play a zombie master. And I can give it island walk, of course, and I can kill it. Oh, and attacking here and killing my opponent with the island fish yes yes oh this is what i wanted to do man it feels good it's one one now let's get the island fishes out for game number three and see if i can wreck this zombie deck game number three okay this is the decider can i find more island fishes and of course a little bit of blue power <laughs> and can i use that to kind of win this matchup my opponent of course starting here again a cyclopean mummy and using my Ancestral Recall, that proxy it is, on the end step of my opponent to draw three more cards. You can kind of see my opponent go like, oh man, again, really? And uh, there is a Boomerang. So playing a Boomerang on one of his lands, kind of with the goal to slow him down. And I also have to discard here, putting away, throwing away a uh, Fish Liver Oil. There's the attack by the Cyclopean Mummy, dropping to 18 here. And uh, tapping to for a Merfolk Assassin. There is a Terror taking care of that merfolk assassin and there is an attack by the cyclopean mummy gonna go to 16 the terror came from the sideboard by the way 
and uh, also that zombie master. So things are not looking good for me right now. I need to put something on the board. Playing a Phantasmal Terrain, it's not the worst, but far from the best. That means he's got an island now in three swamps, tapping four. There's that Knowledge Fold again. After dealing four damage to me, I'm on 12. I need to get some blockers up. There is a Lord of Atlantis, but just one Lord cannot really do a lot. Probably going to take more damage here. Going to eight. And there is another Knowledge Vault, so I'm really, really under pressure here. I need to get or another Lord of Atlantis on the board. Or actually a Merfolk Assassin, because that becomes a 2-3 because of the Lord. It looks like I can't find any lands. Really looking at my hand here. And have to pass. Ah, this is bad. Now I got a chump. And I actually bring it back to my hand before damage is dealt. So that means I don't take damage from the Cyclopean Mummy. But I do take 2 damage. And I decide to do it differently. I decide to send back the Zombie Master. And okay, there is a Pestilence. Oh, this is just looking really bad for me. I'm on 6. I think he can kill me. Oh man, this is kind of a letdown after that game number two that was just so incredibly exciting. He can actually kill me now with the Pestilence, I guess. He just wants to um, yeah, kind of attack with this Cyclopean Mummy that now has Swamp Walk. And there is another Boomerang. And I just kind of feel like I'm just drawing the cards in the wrong order. He's activating his Pestilence twice, killing my Lord of Atlantis. I'm on four. He can kill me next turn with the Pestilence alone, playing another Lord. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is it. He's forcing me to block, and now he can just use the Pestilence. Yeah, that's it. That's over. Okay, wow. And this is sometimes how it goes. We saw like a very, very exciting, um, you know, game uh, number um, number two. And uh, game number one actually was quite interesting as well. Unfortunately, game number three was very, very one-sided. Nonetheless, congratulations to my opponent, Yupvok, for winning with his really cool and flavorful Zombie Nation deck, man. Well done, and thank you for uh, letting me play with your Island Fish, because I actually borrowed it from Yup, because I don't have an original Arabian Nights, unfortunately. But anyway, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for the games. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever killed somebody with an island fish just going, because if not, I can really recommend it. it. It just feels so cool to swing in with an island fish and actually, you know, make an impact with a beautiful card like that. Also, a thank you to Jesper Mirforce, man, for your beautiful art on the island fish. Okay, so uh, this was it. This was the episode for today. Thank you for watching um, the episode right here on Timmy Talks. And before you go, I would just like to ask you to do three things to help the channel. The first thing is, if you're not a subscriber yet, you can subscribe. It is completely free. The second thing that you can do is hit that like button. It really, really helps. And the third thing that you can do is simply leave a comment. Tell me what you think of this matchup would you like to play with any of these decks would you make any changes do you have any questions regarding the rules feel free to leave a comment in the comments below and all those things really really help now there's one other thing you can do and that is you can become a sponsor of the show and um, you can do that by becoming a patron on patreon there's probably a, an info card popping up right now if you click on the card, that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page with all the info. Talking about that, one of the cool perks about joining the Patreon program is that you get your name on the end scroll after each and every video. And we are right now going to that end scroll. So a big thank you to all my patrons and channel members. You guys rock my world and you're the reason that this channel is still here. So let's go to the end scroll.
Just think it's a samba kazee. 